That's right. We're live. We're not even doing the 30 seconds because this is crazy talk. The fact that CGC has completely just went the complete opposite direction of what everyone thought they were going to go. And I, I'm just shocked. I'm absolutely shocked by all of this news. And to talk with me tonight about all of this craziness from January all the way up till now toward the end of March is Mike from the Spiders Lair. What is up? How's it going? Hey, 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 what's up, everyone? Oh, man, Dude, tell me about insanity. it, right? Ooh. Oh, What's boy. up, Anakin? Okay, so what's up, Anakin? How you doing? Okay, so check it out, everyone. Wow. I'm at a loss for words. I can't believe, okay. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm going to say this much right off the bat. About damn time, okay? Oh, for sure. Because, first of all, we're talking about CBCS that's been authenticating signatures for years. But the thing yep. about it is they weren't authenticating signatures the way CGC is about to. They yeah. acquired the JSA, and that's not the Justice Society of American People. Trust me. The JSA has <laughs> been around for like about four generations. So if you know what the JSA is, it's how PSA started, how they started to like um, authenticate signatures, um, you know, the, the, the prerequisite for what becomes later as CGC. Um, see, yeah. um, so what they did was they pretty much um been around forever authenticating things. These are like the top authenticators, and of course, what do they do instead of hiring them? No, they bought them outright and acquired them. Now, I'm going to tell you why I feel like, and that's the craziest part of me. all of that. Yeah, but and I, I'm going to tell you why I, I honestly that feel that, yeah, I'm sorry, I, I feel that that was the best move for them, but also. Mm -hmm. I feel that that was the worst move for them or the worst move for us. I should say, yeah. because now witness signatures, the price to get a witness signature is going to shoot up. It's going to skyrocket. And to get your sign to get the signature authenticated is most likely going to be right where it's at right now, which is about, what is it? 50 bucks to get a signature uh, witnessed and graded, not including the cost of signature. Yes, exactly. Right, so I'm not sure what the pricing is going to be on that, but the thing about it is that okay, so I have sent in books to CBCS, right? Um, books that I knew that CGC just wouldn't authenticate, and I did this for two reasons because I figured one day, well, if they did authenticate it and they send it back to me with a yellow label, yep. when CGC actually does it, I can just send them back the slab. Also, I gotta tell you guys, I have been buying Spider Man comic books forever. And um, when Stanley had passed, and since I was a child, I had literally bought, gone to cons um, before they were even called cons. I would go mm -hmm. to these things. They were comic book conventions. Um, and I had so many signatures from different artists, Stanley, Chris Cremont, um, over the years that, like, you know, were not authenticated because a lot of books back then especially, and I have a lot of these books. Like, I have a – I'm excited about it. I can't find a book. I was going to show you guys. I have an Amazing Spider-Man. I forget which number it was, but I know it's a Craven the Hunter one, um, the original Craven the Hunter. I had Bob McCloud sign, sign it for me. But what I'm trying to explain to you guys is back then, no one was signing covers. They were only signing the first page. Now, yep. why is that important? Because now you, there's people like me who have books like this laying around. I'll give you guys a quick example. So check this out. I, I And this was literally just laying around. Now, this is Alien vs. Predator number one, signed by Chris Claremont in 1990. Now, I have the certificate and everything, right? August 1st, yep. 1990, this was signed, okay? Now, normally, I would not send this in because how am I going to authenticate this? But now, this is going to go and get a yellow label. Same thing yep. with, um. let's see. So, I got a will it be a yellow here. label? That's what I'm wondering. Yes, will they bring because... back the red label? Or will they no, do no. a yellow These label? Will be yellow labels. CBCS currently does verified yes. signatures and yellow labels. Right. I'm wondering if there's going to be a new label for witness signatures and a label, and they keep the yellow label for verified, or because obviously collectors, which I mean resellers in that sense, are going to mm -hmm. want this to be noticeable and 
Yes, I don't think yes, the CGC definitely. fanboys who have been saying for years that oh, authentic or verification and authentication is not as reliable as um, witness signatures, which is true. I mean, you don't really see the person right. do it, but at the same time, to sit there and say that all of this is not the same and stuff, you should be in bed, little girl. Why are you dancing? To say. Hey, hey, what's up, girl? How you doing? Can you say hi? Hi. What a cutie. <laughs> hi. <laughs> to to sit there and what say that um she should be or that it should be different is craziness. Like I really don't think yes. that verified and authenticated and witnessed are th- truly three different things. Right, no, I believe I, it's one thing. I see you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go I'm put a, this one back to bed, but you keep talking. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I'm gonna put it to you like this. This is what I feel. Okay, now it has to be done, and there's a reason it has to be done because unfortunately now we have the greats that are no longer here anymore. So what happens to their um signatures? We can't witness them anymore. John Romita's no longer here. Jack Kirby's no longer here. Stan Lee's no longer here. So what happens to all of those signed books? There's thousands, tens of thousands of these books floating around in the world. So you have to do something for these books. So I feel like it has to be done because just for the historical factor of accounting for all of those signatures that were not verified by CGC, but remember, before CGC, People were getting their comics signed anyway. This is not has anything that we had to think about growing up. This happened recently because in the last 20 plus years of the creation of CGC, CBCS, GPX, like the idea of encapsulating a comic. So why wouldn't you be able to just go back and authenticate everything because you haven't, like Stanley Signature, perfect example. You have enough of his signatures um, to verify it by an expert. That's what the that's what the JSA is very good at. They are absolutely good at verifying signatures. And they use a lot of technique. It's not just like I could look at a signature and say, okay, this was signed by Stanley. Because you got to understand, too, throughout Stanley's life, because I know I have a lot of these comics that are signed. His signature changes as he got older. But there were people there that knew how he signed. And I do have CGC books that already have his signature in his later years. So CGC already has records of these. They already have capsulated CGCs that were witnessed while Stan Lee was alive. And he signed them. So it's not out of the realm of impossibility to take a book like that and then just literally sign you know, like it's signed, and then you take a book like that with 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 Stanley's signature. Hey, what's up, Alex? And then you realize Hello. afterwards that yeah, you know what? Well, what I was saying when you stepped away was pretty much um, it's I think it's a good idea that has to be done for the fact that we have to understand something. John Romita is no longer here. King Jack Kirby no longer here. Stan Lee no longer here. Um, yep. I mean mm-hmm. Bob Kane no longer here. Bill Finger, long well, is he? No, he's no longer here either. So we are talking about decades of books being signed, and I'm telling you guys, and I'm telling you this, I feel it, it, it may be a yellow label, but they may make a different label. I'm going to explain to you guys why I feel this. Because remember one thing, before CGC, CBCS and all, anything you encapsulated, right? No artists, no artists back in the day was signing the covers because they didn't want to damage them. That didn't start becoming a thing until Comic-Con became an, like an, a runaway success. And I remember yep. going to the first Comic-Con. And you remember the one we went to in New York. So I'll explain yep. to you the first one so you can get reference as to what I'm talking about. Okay, so remember how we walk in and you got that whole square and you have the upstairs and downstairs? That was Comic-Con. Yep. That, and it was like empty. That was Comic-Con. That whole, that, that's, yeah. okay, that's it. And you see now, 20 something years later, how it expanded to an entire the buildings. Like, if you guys have ever been to the Jacob Javits Convention Center, 
I'll give you some context on it. It can legitimately hold up to 200,000 people easily. Okay? And that's how <laughs> massive this place is. Okay? Local um, Comic-Cons when, when Comic are the size started, of that, what those original ones were. Like the, right, the ones that exactly, you can go to your exactly. local so, in your small town or small right. city with 500 to 2,000 people. Yeah. That's what Comic Cons used to be in big cities. They were oh, not wow. this massive, gigantic um, mecca. Like it I, wasn't knew were, this... I knew they were smaller. I didn't know it was that small in the beginning. It, it, it oh, yeah. Really I mean, like, small. So what was, was the one right after Chris, COVID um, that you went to? Yeah. When New York that City was, was right no, after COVID, was, no, how many I, people well, were there? Oh, yeah. So this is, um, that was 2020. I actually went, um, you know, I got my connection, so I got in. Um, yeah. I think you had to be vaccinated back then to be in. Um, I'm going to say I wasn't, but it's all good. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's, that's actually the year that I actually met Joe, Joe Doyle. Shout out to you. I actually met, um, David Nakayama. I met a bunch of people there and I was able to meet them for the fact that there was no body there. And I loved it. To me, that reminded me of the very first con. So remember how we got in and you see that yep. entrance and you see the upstairs? That's it. That was the only con that there was. Afterwards, now you see, and I was showing you the textures of the building. I said, look at right here. You see how it looks like slightly bluer and then that yeah. still is more white? Because that's the add-on. Because they were becoming so successful that they just started building more and more. I mean, because... It's not just used for Comic Con, Jake the Jam Convention Center. It's used for boat shows, car shows, all kinds of craziness that you can imagine they put there. But nothing, and I mean nothing, does the volume that Comic Con does. Absolutely not even close. So I was going to say that I think that CGC may make a different label. And I'm going to explain to you why. Like I said, some of these books are signed on the inside. The old artists that you can't get to sign on the outside no more. Yep. I have an old school Amazing Spider Man 300, right? Um, now, when I had got this book, I had Tom McFarlane sign it for me. But like I said, they signed on the inside back in the day. And yeah. then I had the book resubmitted when um I was, um I forget what year it was, but this was probably about a couple of years or maybe a year before Stanley passed away. And that was the last book I was able to get in. So CGC, even though they didn't witness, um, the signature of Tom McFarlane, when I gave it back to Todd, Todd said to them, I said, I, you guys, you signed this on the first page. And I showed him. He was like, I remember. So he had yep. actually told CGC, that's my signature. And Stan Lee took it, signed it, and then they encapsulated it. Um, So there's going to be, I feel like if you can't have a signature on the outside, then maybe, it, I mean, I can't see it being a yellow label with no signature on the cover. Because to me, so, having the signature on the cover would make it a yellow label. So I think that's going to be another to category idea. for the books that are signed on the inside. Yes, that. So this was posted to a Facebook group I follow, and it was an email that somebody had sent okay. to CGC recently. My understanding is that CGC yes. acquired JSA autograph authentication, and customers can now submit Signed books to CGC to have unwitnessed signatures authenticated along with getting the books graded and slabbed. May I suggest an additional CGC business opportunity? Yes. Many collectors such as myself have dozens, sometimes hundreds of books with interior signatures we would like to have graded, but are hesitant because once yes. the book is slabbed, yes. the collector would lose visual access to the signature. Would CGC consider an Absolutely. additional service for interior signed books where CGC would take a picture of the interior signature Use that as the picture, or use that picture as part of the CGC label, perhaps on the back of the label. This would provide additional revenue for CGC, fulfilling a market demand for collectors like myself who have been who have large numbers of books with interior signatures from the 60s through the 90s before signing covers became more popular. Exactly, exactly. And I, you know what? Shout out that to that. That would be a ton of fun. Think, yeah, that sounds that, like a great that, idea. I yeah, I agree with that. Take a picture yeah, so like of it. Said, have it does. saved. Yeah. Yeah, because like everybody, like, like, you went through all that trouble to get the signature and everything. Exactly. And yes, you and yeah, they want to encapsulate it, but you also want to um, have a reminder that yes, you got the signature. So taking yep. a picture of it will really help. 
And it it would allow for the people who got these signatures to have that memory of this is what the signature looked like, or this is who signed it. And it also says with reholder gate, I mean, there were books that were getting taken out and put in. If I put a book into a holder and say it's signed by Stanley on the interior cover, nobody is going to be able to confirm that without taking it out. So now you are going to have all of these books nice. that say it's signed by Stanley, authenticated by JSA on the interior cover yes. or on page three or on page, whatever it is, wherever you had Stanley sign. I mean, personally, I would love to have him sign it like right on that page two where it's like that big splash panel. Yeah. Um, typically, typically it's like a big splash panel of the character. Mm-hmm. Um, and you see kind, kind of like this right here, have him sign right here. Like that would be beautiful yes. to have him sign it. And in the yeah. old school comics, that used to be a picture of the character of like the main action sequence. That's where I would have them sign it. So obviously people are having them sign it on different pages for many different reasons. So you would never be able to confirm that unless you took a picture and put it somewhere on the slab. The other thing that I'm not a huge fan of that like CBCS does right now that I know CGC is going to do is throw away the COA, which they did with uh, my J Scott Campbell signature. The COA looks really cool. I I know COAs are just pieces of paper. I know a lot of people will tell you that they mean absolutely nothing. But truly, like genuinely, a lot of COAs are very well made. Like they are exciting. They're enjoyable. Yeah. Jamie Tyndall's always has his amazing artwork on That's it. That's not going to them. Yeah. But- yep. I love COAs. They look amazing. Keep- exactly. Listen. If I could keep my COA, and I wouldn't want. It sucks this, that they I'm throw it away. It. Like they just can't send it back to you. It's not that much effort on right. their part, to be honest. Yeah, because well, they lose books. They can't keep COAs. You gotta understand. They were um. <laughs> that's the only way that they really had to verify the signature. So we're taking their word on like a piece of paper, but yep. that's not to say that maybe some of those books aren't real signatures. Who knows? But yeah, yeah. this CLA was signed. I look. I got history on this. I remember when I got this. That's the year. Shout out to you, Jim Henry Universe. The old one up in New York City. Yeah. And this was in 1990. I'm keeping this, sir. I hope that they don't require the certificate as proof. Because like I said, I have plenty of signatures that don't have any kind of certificates. But I know that these signatures can all be verified, especially the Stan Lee ones. Because like I said to you guys earlier, since I was younger, I used to always go to like these little mini cons, and whenever I got a chance to jump online, I would get my book signed. Um, met Stanley a couple of times; it was pretty cool. Um, you know, I always thought I was gonna have more time. That's only gonna suck. Mm-hmm. And then when he passed, I started to go on eBay or anywhere where I could find signed books by Stanley, and I was just grabbing them left and right and center. I'm gonna do an entire show on this soon. I just got to locate in where of the far, um, my 12 Pandora boxes it lies. So I just got to dig through them. But I must have at least, I'm going to say, about 75 signed books by Stan Lee alone. That's just from Stan Lee. That's so, awesome. Now, I don't know if you guys have been keeping up with the current market value of his signature, but his signature right now commands about two grand. So I was grabbing really? these books, $30. Fifty dollars, seventy dollars, forty dollars. I'll show you. I'll show you my eBay receipts. See, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna show everything that I bought, and because you understand, I'm a comic book company as well. So my business is about buying collectibles, and this is part of my asset yeah. overall of the company's worth. So yeah. this is something that I bought for the company as well as myself, you know. And this is an asset. So these things that I have, I I kept meticulous records because in the collector's world. Okay, like with my with most of the collection that you see behind you and everything that I've ever done, these are things I've really collected my whole life. It's just that the signature books of late, those were in the last five years I was grabbing them. And even though I knew that CGC wasn't going to authenticate them, I always said, there's got to be a day when they hire a, sing, a signature authenticator. I mean, so, they are everywhere. They're in the FBI. They're in law enforcement. You can do yeah. this. If you have enough signatures yep. of one person, someone else can authenticate that. It's not a problem. Yep. 
But you did what they just did was they went 10 levels above and got the people who actually do the signatures are not just comics, magazines, dollar bills, um, yep. historical documents. I mean, like anything you can imagine that has the signature on, JSA has certified. And that's because they have experts. It's a yeah. it's a family business. It's like four generations, I believe. And they have been doing this forever. They're the oldest people, the oldest company in the world to do certificate certifying signatures. So, so then why like I said earlier? Why would CGC buy JSA? Well, it's why, real simple. Why, why would why you would not JSA want to buy them? Want, but why would JSA want to sell? Like obviously, if it's as simple as um, of being able to like become partners on this, why would JSA say, Hey, we've been doing this for four generations. Let's sell the CGC and sell basically, I mean, all the rights of the company away and we'll just work in partnership with them, but they own us now. Like what, what would be the, well, um, entice? Like why? <laughs> Money, that's why. Think about it. Well, if somebody yeah, but... threw a ton, somebody threw a lot of money at you and told you, not only do we want to acquire you, but we want to keep you guys running it forever and do how you want to do. So it's technically yeah. still their company. They just been bought out. It's like when George Lucas sold to Disney. I mean, I don't think it's gonna be a debacle like that. But I think the motivation <laughs> for most people is is this could be a debacle, though. Um, it's about money. And also think about it like this from CGC's perspective. Why wouldn't they not want them? Because now what you just did was you just bought them. So what did you just do? You took this away from CBCS. PBS. Yeah, but CBCS already has you know, their like own you, authentication. That, yeah, I that's, understand. That's where I'm but struggling. Authentic, like, but they don't, right, but their authenticators are not JSA. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. True. Like, it's, it's, I can be trained, and I can be trained on these signatures, and I can tell you what's the Stanley or not, but I'm not JSA. You're True. talking about generations of people doing this. So, as a company that is the leader of encapsulating comics, why would you not want to buy that out and corner that market? Because now I guarantee you, not only will people be doing what we were talking about with the inside signatures, I think that should be a different label as well. But also now, any any um comic books you got. From CBCS that's encapsulated with signatures. I'm looking at a Spider-Man number one signed by Dan Slott um, and mm -hmm. Michelini. I mean, I have a bunch. Like, I'm just going to hand in the whole slab because it's already been verified. And they're going to double verify it. And I yeah. guarantee you, I can't wait to see. I'm doing this because I want to see just how on the level CBCS was. And this may be good for them as well because if they don't get any blowback and all their books are coming back and, and – um. CGC is saying, oh, yeah, we, we authenticate that too. That makes them look good because then you can really trust them. So I think in a way that they're cornering the market, but as long as CBCS has done the right thing, they have nothing to worry about. But imagine yeah. now we start going through these signatures with these authenticators and they're like, but wait, that's not Dan Slot's signature. This is not Stan Lee's signature. Dan, that's when you start to – because be honest, when you guys buy a CBCS, right, and you buy a sign, and you buy a sign CGC signature series. Two things you're gonna find. One, you're not really feeling the CBC as you know, like with guys like me, we, we didn't have the certificates or anyone witnessing it. That was the only way you could do it. So, yeah. with that being said, um, you handing these books in to CBCS, um, and you're getting them signed under the assumption that it's the right signature. But like I said, you don't know. You don't know until you send it True. to now the, the authenticators. Let's see who does a better job. And I believe that the JSA is not only a smart move for them, but I guarantee you, if they're smart, if they're real smart, every time they find a book from CBCS that has a signature that's not that's not authentic, they're going to say something about it. I think that's going to be their goal. But at the end of the day, you know, if you didn't do anything shady, you got nothing to worry about, you know? But like I so said, let's talk about we hold the gate. Let's just say, for instance, somebody signed the book. That's, we don't know. That's the where thing I'm wondering like about. That. And they, yeah. Why has there been no new news about that? But then we're going to have new, like we just had news about CGC not too long ago. Um, I can't remember exactly what it was, but we had some news about CGC yeah. and what they were doing. Oh, the 9.9. <laughs> um, we had that. 
That was yeah. February. Nine point nine pre screen. Yeah. I remember then we that. have the JSA now, but we have never gone back and mm-hmm. said this investigation is wrapped up. Here's what we found. All they did was release 300 okay, so, names of books that were mostly Amazing Spider-Man right. over 20 years. And you're telling right. me they only did 300 yeah. books in 20 years? Come on. It was it was actually 350. Yeah. And there is an update, but the update is complete BS. Okay? Um, because the update as of right now, um, shout out to Swagger House Comics. He broke the story too. Um, is that they are Right now, um, they're saying that they're pursuing it actively in court, but they're not. What's no, they're happening not. is this. They are settling. They're settling. That's what's happening. They're going to say they're going to pursue it, but they're not. They are settling quietly. That seems about and right. trust me, they're going to settle this, and this is exactly what's going on. You guys can look this up if you want, because I keep on top of this just to make sure once a question comes up, we can answer it. But yeah, they are right now trying to settle this case. They are not looking to persecute anybody. They are looking to make a deal. Now, me personally, I want to fully prosecute it because that protects your business. But I can also understand but that's not also not, not their choice. Litigation for years when you have these measures. Like I mean, the, the way that I understand it is this is if they art into a criminal. Like this is a state. Yeah, but I'm not sure how. No, I'm a. It's not. Right. So my point it, is, it's not CGC versus anyone because at the end of the day, CGC got scammed. Yeah. But all these people also got scammed. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So what are they going to no do? Go after the person who scammed them, so that way CGC can pay the people who got scammed. Like. That's basically what's going to yes. happen is CGC yes. is going to get paid and then CGC is going to pay out. But that doesn't yeah. solve the problem of the fact that you can crack these cases without any like noticing in in a picture or unless you're like real up close to it. And most people don't display their books where you can see the cracks. I mean, <laughs> I sure as yeah. hell don't. They're right up against each other. Then you have... So, well. You have all of these things where you you're talking about comic books that can be taken out and put back in in under five minutes, and then I can send it off and ship it and have no issue reholdering it because CGC got tricked or duped so many times, and that's fraud. Yeah, that's well, also um. I can't think of the word for it, but like, there's a couple crimes there. Okay, I'm gonna tell you what it is. I mean, real simple. I don't, and you're right. You're right. This is a fraud case, but fraud would be the least of anyone's worries because you gotta understand something. We're talking federal crime, mail yeah. fraud. I'm gonna explain to you what mail fraud means. That means yeah, that's, exact, that that's a serious you crime. Use the United States Postal Service to commit fraud by sending a book to someone knowing that that book is not what it's supposed to be is fraud. The thing I find weird is in the court case, I don't see anyone arrested. So right off the bat, that Mm. makes me think, well, why haven't these people been arrested? Because these are federal crimes. I don't know. I believe that what could be happening is that they just want to settle because I think for them, it's embarrassing enough that it happened. Now you're persecuting these people <laughs> yeah. in court. I mean, I don't know. I mean, this is a civil lawsuit. That's what I'm trying to explain to you guys. It's not a criminal lawsuit. This is civil. And um, yeah. I um, there's another update when it comes to the cases because um, there's another YouTuber I follow, Automatic Comics. Shout out to you, my brother. He's been getting back CGCs left and right, and he noticed something. And then say it. And trust me, we'll cover this next week if you guys want. But apparently, they already made a new holder. So I'm going to explain to you what happened from oh, his are? perspective. So if you look at a line like this, right? If you look at this, they mm-hmm. the new holders have like this weird big plastic piece right there. Like it's a improved clamp. Like in other words, it's a clamp yeah. that you should have put down. And it's so big. And it's so stuck in there. And he shows it on camera. 
It compares to the old one to the new one. And I'm like, yeah. But you know what? That thing you can't crack open. Because what they did was, you see how in the old ones you got these two tiny little, that's all you got to do. Just drop that. That little thing pops right out. Yep. No, you have a big bracket now that is glued in there. And not only is it glued in there, they, um, when he was showing it on video, it was rough. It was, it, it, it was like scuffed some, roughly scuffed. Like after they um put it in, and he got a bunch of books back like this, roughly scuffed. I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to come, but you know these things are glued with huge hinge now on the side of the book. They they not saying it yet, but trust me, these are the new cases you're gonna see. We broke it here first, so you guys understand. And these are something that they're just gonna keep roll out, and they will talk about in a couple of months. But when you guys start getting anything for CGC. And if you get these, please let us know because I'm telling you right now, they are already starting to send them. They are already started to send them. They already took care of this problem. They already know now nah, we have to take care of this. I mean, personally, me, I would criminally prosecute these people to the fullest extent yeah. of the law because I you agree. gotta understand, mail fraud is a federal crime. Not only that, you are using. If I use a credit card, let's say, to buy a comic that was two hundred and fifty dollars, and you told me this was signed by Stan Lee. Then I find out it's not. Now that's a felony. Because normally a misdemeanor would be under a thousand dollars. But you use the credit card. That's wire fraud. You use the hmm. mail. That's mail fraud. That bumps everything up to a felony. So honestly, this should be pursued to the highest extent of the criminal court. But yeah. I don't that's not what's happening. This is about money. Which makes this is no all about sense money. to me. This is about put because they, they want have you to forget everyone this ever happened. To uh make a Example of them, exactly, people, and just show like how serious this can yeah, be. Not, because yeah, how many? But they're not going to do that. How many old cases are out there? Yeah, that I can now crack open. Oh my god! Put a new book in, yeah. and do this again, and get the new holder, and be like, well, it can't be a scam because it's in the new holder. Well, I'm telling you, like, it would I, be extremely easy. I don't know you if you know, guys saw my video a couple months ago, but I had accidentally cracked open one of my um unsigned um Amazing Spider-Man number ones, Dan Slot edition. Um, and I'm telling you right now, that thing cracked so perfectly. I was able to get it out completely with no problem. And I could see yeah. exactly how that would work. I take that book out, I slip in a 9-4 or a 9-2, and you know, and they're not checking it. They no. should check it for due diligence purpose. See, like yep. I did my video, which was stupid of me. I cut it open just to show people. But I was saying during the video that this is how you could do it. You could literally just crack this corner, pop it open. And I was getting it out and it popped a little bit, but the case still stood closed. Like I could have literally took it out. I mean, legitimately, if yeah. you wanted to. And this is why I, I was like, was giving a tutorial how cases, to commit fraud. If you, yes, exactly. <laughs> no, how, how to look for fraud. It, it's okay court. because all I you you don't get prosecuted court. in criminal court, just civil court. I, I, You're I that kid. Yeah, you could do something illegal and not get in trouble. <laughs> no, no, no. Which is kidding, by the way. I hope, I hope everyone knows cringe. we're kidding. <laughs> 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 disclaimer. No, we're, we're, or, we're messing with everyone. <laughs> we're kidding. I'm just saying like this. They should have really prosecuted these guys to the full extent of the law. And I hate when people don't follow up on that. I mean. I, yeah. I I thought this was like for the investigators that I was talking to were saying that they were talking <laughs> to the FBI and they were talking to the and I'm like yeah okay so where's the case at They're now probably not no open one's night. heard anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I haven't so, said know, anything to I mean, CGC before, yeah. so you are ruining it for me, Flanagan. <laughs> no, no, not a con you. <laughs> it, it, it's okay. Just just start, set up a new account and you'll be fine. Nobody will know. <laughs> I'm going to go under the name <laughs> Monkey anyway. Man. Yep. <laughs> I'll just tell you, like, I, gorilla I, Garcia. I, I think that all this is, everything that oh, you see nice. now I like that name. with the 9-9 nine -nine pre-screen, <laughs> I think this is also done, Chris, because I do believe that they are trying to, like, make us forget. You understand? This is bad publicity, bad PR for them. So, but how do you make people forget? Oh, we're going to have a 9-9 nine -nine pre-screen. Oh, okay. Hey, look, we just bought some signature authenticators. Let's see what it's going to be next month. Want to know what it's going to be next month? Hey, we just made some new cases. Check this out. Every month you're going to get something new to distract you from these guys. Just so you know, know, there's know already been a 9.9 .9 pre-screen. The influencers have proved it. <laughs> yes, 
Yes, exactly. Not only that, man. I mean, <laughs> I'm not knocking CGC, but Jesus, they sold an amazing Spider-Man 9.8. I think it's so I don't even know what it sold for. It sold for millions. Um, and you can see in the damn picture, what do I see on a 9.8? A clear freaking spine tick, like breaking color and everything. <laughs> I'll send you guys a picture later. And that's a 9-8. So it's like... So anything hey, could be a 9-8 now. Question, you, nine, I you know what's funny? Bro, is CGC that is that they so... Have, I, yeah. CGC is so well-known and connected that they could get a 9-2, 9-4, 9-6 version of any comic book they wanted, put it in a 9-8, sell it, and then get that money back because all they have to do is say it's a nine eight and it's a nine eight. Right. You can yeah. have a nine eight amazing fantasy fifteen. That's what I'm telling you about. And everyone would say, Well, CGC said not it, that, so it's gotta well, be a I'm nine eight, about, so it's worth yeah. nine eight money. Exactly. And then it would be yeah. the first nine point eight amazing there fantasy fifteen ever so, sold. Isn't it it would make that, millions of dollars. Yeah. Like CGC would be gone, or they they'd be fine, like no problem. They they have that power. Well, like that's you got that's how corrupt they yeah. could be. But do you see that happening that anytime soon? That they may be that Who's corrupt. Didn't because already I'm happen. telling you, that book was a heritage. <laughs> yeah, that book that I'm telling you guys that, that I'm talking about was sold in the heritage auction with the gold yep. nine eight CGC label. Um now a book in the millions like that. Um, with a spine tick and you're putting a nine eight. Let me tell you something. Yep. That not that if you drop that down just to a nine six, that takes off tens of thousands of dollars right off the bat like that. But hey, a CGC, we say it's a nine eight. So I don't trust no one. <laughs> I don't trust CGC. I don't trust them. And I'm gonna tell you because like like I said, I we we should do that show. I'm going to give you some. Maybe if you want to do it next week, we should go over this 9-8 that I saw. And I'm telling yeah. you. And you guys will agree with me. You're going to be like, yeah. That'd be good to see. Find it. I mean, I have. I'm telling you. It's nuts because you got to, like I said, the difference between a book at that level, at a 9-6 to a 9-8, is yep. thousands. I mean, not thousands. Tens of thousands of dollars. So I think this book sold for $1.38 million. But that could be a nine hundred and ninety-nine thousand dollar book. Which Jesus Christ! Is, I right? could pay off my student loans. <laughs> and you oh, might still listen, have a dollar I wish left I was over. Yeah. Real quick, before we go any further with this I conversation, gotta... this Harley Quinn is up for yes. grabs. It is a Steve Messenger artwork. Drop that hashtag, uh, hashtag Harley into the chat, so that way you can get two entries into that giveaway. That's hashtag Harley while it while the banner's up nice. while we're live. Drop that hashtag. Two entries into that giveaway. Do it. Oh, she will regret it forever. No. If you don't do it, Spiders will show up to your house. <laughs> I don't think we want that. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I mean, this reminds <laughs> me. Have, you have you guys ever watched the show White Collar? <laughs> I, I've heard of it. White Collar? Yes. So, there was an episode I where like show they lot, had yeah. two bottles of wine. And one was, or they both claimed oh, I remember this episode. And this bottle of wine could could not be faked because it was a bottle that was before the atomic bomb. And once the atomic bomb yeah. went off, cesium entered everything. So as soon as you put yes. anything from after the atomic bomb into this bottle, they would have to do a cesium test to see if it came from before the atomic bomb and if it was an actual bottle that came from before 1940. And yeah. this is reminding me of that because you have, you could put a true comic book into a 9.8 holder and you could put a, let's be real, fake comic book into a 9.8 holder. As long as it looks like the real thing, nobody can take it out and question it without taking it out and questioning it. So yeah, absolutely. who's to say that that's the real one and that's the fake one without actually being able to take these out. And there's a lot of people who knew that when they started getting into this, like this is not something that is easily done, but at the same time, it's not something that is so un impossible and unfeasible that it can't be done. Look, man, if people could escape 
maximum security prisons, you could break open a CGC easy. That's it. It's real simple. Yeah. As humans, you know, as humans, you know, you're we're curious creatures, you know. I'm like looking at this, like, yep. hey, wait, I got a nine eight over here. I got this nine two over here. You know what? Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah. I mean that easy. I mean. If you want to live that life, I don't preach to no one's morality, but that's just fucked up, honestly. <laughs> really yeah. looking that way, like, really. Yeah, just watch I mean, Spider Slayer's video on how to crack open a case. If you want to go that route. <laughs> <laughs> I I never say exactly how I crack it open. I just say what happened, which was the truth. Like, I'm looking at it one day just like this. and Oh, I oh, I thought you, went, I thought you no, showed them how to open it. Literally, I didn't open. do it on purpose, no, but I did take it out the case. No, no, I, I showed everybody that the case cracked open as I dropped it because, like like what Chris was saying, they have nothing but these two plastic hinges at the corner, and they're so easy. You can pop this easily, okay? Mm -hmm. I've seen videos where guys take a heat gun, a heat gun, and just leave it. You don't put it on there, but you take the heat gun right to the corner until it becomes loose because what's in there? A little piece of glue. That's it. You do it on both sides, and guess what? Oh, say, I got a pop open. I'm going to resubmit it. Take that book yep. out and put a um a lower grade in. So, like even when I bought CGCs, I have bought some, but the majority of all my CGCs were all submitted, um, or I got them submitted at cons. That's why I'm confident with what I got because I bought like I like even the few that I bought, I bought for reputable buyers that I know personally. Shout out to you, Nate Comics. You guys are looking for some CGCs you can trust. Not a commercial. That's one. Uh, of my boys, Nathaniel, they comics, yo, know, really good dealer with comics. And I mean, he deals with heavy, heavy books. And can you send us a link to his stuff? Story. He was like, I couldn't believe it. Oh, yeah, I'll, in the chat. Yeah, I mean, he follows us, and um, I'll give you guys, yeah, yeah, he he follows us all. So I'll, I'll give you guys oh, all his stuff, you. but Nate Comics, yeah. And we talk about this, and we talk about this every once in a while about the CGCs and stuff, and um, yeah, you yeah. know. There's a lot of shenanigans going on, but there are reputable um, dealers out there who who are good oh, at sure. dealing with comics. And I just say like this: if you're gonna go outside and buy from like an auction, whatnot, eBay, Instagram, whatever you choose, just make sure that whoever you're doing business with is a reputable dealer. And oh, snap. understand hey, Chris, that just because you you're reputable? dealing with them doesn't mean you're not gonna get anything messed up. What's up? I just bought from Chris. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> I, I'm a reputable deal. You know me face to face. <laughs> no, yeah. I only know your screen exactly. to screen. Like the gorilla. Face? <laughs> face to gorilla. Well, I, well, I know you face to face, and I trust you. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good guy. Trust me. Yeah. Trust First time you've seen my face in a while. Hey. Dude, I I'm, like, like, I'm eating dinner. That's why my face is out. Ah, there you go. <laughs> I got uh, back from work. <laughs> I, I'm a strong believer in karma, and I feel that what what goes around comes around. Yes, so you do good too. things to people, good things come to you. And honestly, yes. like it, at the end of the day, I really don't care if they criminally prosecute these two, three, four, however many people were involved in Reholder Gate. But it, yeah, the fact that CGC is not going that route, or not even allowing anyone to go that route, or the fact that no one's going that route makes it seem like this was a cgc inside job like it 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 feels as though it was someone who used to be at cgc during the back in the day or someone who still might be at cgc and cgc doesn't want oh, to sure. announce that someone inside said look at what i can do oh for sure like, in fact, that, in that's just lawsuit, what it feels like in in the lawsuit itself it states that there's at least two dealers in there, and there were a couple actually, a man and a woman. They actually worked okay. for CGC from 2019 to 2021. They're a Hispanic couple. I forget their names. Uh, I'm gonna get more info on that. But these were a couple that worked there for two years, and yes, they were one of the people who committed this fraud. But like I said, is what we're coming down to is this: it's like you gotta understand, like when I try to get a job at CB CGC. Because I felt like I can grade a book with no problem. I was taught by people. Um, I was taught by book cobblers. Like, you know, honestly, look, I made my own manga comics. So I must know what the hell I'm talking about. I know how to grade these things. I know I was taught the final art of comics, right? So when these people started and then they left, 
like the that, that's where the majority of these books are coming from. That's their fault because they were in-house people, and then they yep. they would and then they, I get I don't know if they got fired or they quit, but they were in-house, and then they started running their scam afterwards. Like you said, this is why they're not pursuing anything criminal because it's gonna come down to public um looking at the fact that these were your employees. Why are you yep. going to bring your employee? That shows a lack, a lack of due diligence on your side. So think about that. Yeah. That's why they're doing it like this. Because it's their fault ultimately. It definitely is. Always has been and always will be. It's the people you hired. You lowered your standards. I couldn't get in. I'm a damn book cobble now. Damn it. I'm in comment. I want to work for CGC. If you're hiring these idiots. And then you let them go and they're committing fraud? Come on, man. And yeah. I guarantee you, a lot of the books they graded were all for gays, too. Who knows? They could have been starting this from the inside, planning to get outside, planning to get these books. Maybe they were submitting them. You never know how these scams could work. You have enough people with enough imagination. You can make this. I can make this a big scam. I can be working with my wife inside of CGC, taking all these books. I know a 9-8. I even pull them out put the 9-2. Yo, plot Who knows? I Fox guarantee is. they know. I guarantee they were doing this inside of the fucking inside of CGC itself. I guarantee you, this is why I agree. Criminally being done, and that's yep. why they left to what, start the scam and everything. What up, buddy? Yeah. Oh, hey, what Craig, up? Craig. What's up? Putain here. What's up? Oh, yeah. What's up? I would say Plotris. Oh, they're going to have. On. There's going to be yeah. an, a list of names, and we will see these spiders there on there. <laughs> Imagine oh, though. Like, the spider slayer is the most is, honest person you'll meet in your entire life. <laughs> I want to say it was back two or three years ago. There was someone who posted um, that they went to a con and CGC asked them to grade some books and they got to grade them and then see what they were graded. And if you graded pretty well or pretty consistently with what they said they were actually graded at, you got um like an invitation basically to come to florida and possibly become a cgc grader and that was when they were looking for a ton of graders back in like 2020 2021 and right because of the pandemic exactly yep and tons of people were submitting books there were there was waits of like six seven eight nine months for books to come back and now you it see was the case insane to come together yep it was insane but at the same time it's like you have to realize that these people who are grading are not grading based on your standards. They're grading based on their standards. And maybe they just got lucky that that was graded that way. The oh, reason why I say this is because I just me. saw I... on Facebook that there was a book that somebody submitted to CGC. It came back a 7.5 and he posted and he goes, I always knew this wasn't a 7.5. So out of the blue, because I didn't want a green label anymore, and because it has a signature, I submitted it to CBCS. Did not press it, did not do anything. It came back in 9.4. Oh so CGC 7.5 graded 7.5 for whatever reason that it, they could come up with. They didn't say if there was any yeah. um, uh, graders notes or anything, but could it have been the book that maybe got mislabeled or they didn't put the right number on the case? Like there, I've also yeah. seen those cases. So you see, Chris, how we were just saying, how you just literally put together the entire case about the pandemic and hiring yep. more people. Then you see how that becomes a problem where you got thousands of books to grade, tens of thousands coming in like never before, and you're getting backlogged, and everything's yep. happening quick. Listen, I watched the damn <laughs> video on the 99 pre screen, yeah. and I was disgusted by CGC. What do they do? It's a stack of books. Let's say it's like this, right? They go right to the corners. That's it. They go, oh, those look all right. What? Mm -hmm. What? Like, oh, we may, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. When I watch these people doing their pre-screen, how they're unpacking it out the boxes, and they're just going through the... I'm like, nah. No. What are you doing? Bro, these guys are screening nine nines, and I'm telling you, they're nine eights and nine sixes. I see it yep. myself. Man, you're right. I need to go... I need to go work for these people, man. Y'all need me. You Through need a camera me on a video. Not only... Yeah. 
Not only could I do the job. Well, you should start your own grading company. company. Get layer. <laughs> yeah, maybe in, in all know. honesty, maybe I'll start the Sydney Verse Comics Grading Company. There you go. If you guys want, I'll to trust you. Know, I'll become it, a grader, yo. I trust in you all too. honesty. Thank you. You just I think, me. Uh, I'm doing it. <laughs> I think Ooh. raw books are where it's at. Yes, they don't yes. get the same price, but at the same time, you don't have the same level you of investment into Noah, the book Noah, to get a I was going to say something, but then I thought, nah. But then I thought, fuck it. Why is always better than covered? Say it. <laughs> it, it, I, I would much rather <laughs> be able to go See, back to get it. books <laughs> than have all of my books posted on a wall. I I just I don't need every single book up here on a wall. Not every book is a wall book. I'm a, and that's okay. I'm gonna put you like this, guys. Exactly. I agree I'll with what Chris like said. This. Yeah, because not yeah. every book is could, could be a wall book, even though it's like a high yeah, well, only like old old stuff, yeah, like high value, yeah. But like newer stuff, uh like I, I haven't submitted anything to TGC or CBCS, man, because I'm broke. Uh, <laughs> I don't have a full time job yet, but only part time. But if I were to do it, I want to do books that I personally like. That oh, yeah, snap! Like this cover looks so nice, and I have a like a like I say is a variant, but I also have the regular cover. I'm gonna slap the variant, and if I love it, I want to see it in case. That would be the only time I would send something, uh, or even the Moon Knight number one. I would love to send. Like if I, as long as it's like pleasing yeah. to me, I'll I was in it. That's why I agree with Chris. Like not everything should be up in the wall unless it's like right. priceless or if it's like has personal value to you. Yeah. Right. That's that exactly what I agree with what he just said there too, because yeah, I want to encapsulate a bunch of venoms. They weren't nine eights. Trust me. Not by a long shot. They weren't nine eights. Some of the, I think the, the highest I got was a nine six, but, it's what Alex said that I liked. It was my personal collection that I had since I was yeah. a kid. And I'm proud. I don't care if they're not 9 8s. They're all signed by Sam De La Rosa. They all have yellow labels. And I, I keep them for myself because I know I don't have a problem if anybody wants to buy them in the future. I read every one of them, you know? Yep. And that was a sentimental thing for me to do. That was sentimental. That was like when I started doing CGC, that's why one of the first ones I started getting done was the Venoms. So for yeah. me, that was sentimental. But I feel like this. You should encapsulate books only if it meets two criteria. How much is that book worth? And yep. what is this historical factor? And if when you get those two down, that's when you make a decision. Like, look, like this book. I got this recently back from CGC. This is, come on, man. I had to encapsulate that. You that's know what a beautiful saying? book. Look at that. You got to do it. The yes. first appearance of Billy Bantere. This is a badass cover. I love it. And you see, this is the new one too, guys. So I want you to know, I just got this back recently. You see that right there? Yep. Now they have the same code that CBCS had for years. The um that that code. Um. See, so I feel like I this still say a that book CBC, like this CBC should be encapsulated. Has... CBCS is a lot like Marvel, a lot like the MCU. Wait, can you show that book again? I'm sorry. I was downstairs putting food away, but I was listening. <laughs> CGC is playing Bam. catch up with CBCS right now. Dude, I love CBCS, that. Absolutely. The QR code, the, uh, the blab being like the best quality slab out there. I, I still say CG CBCS has the better slab. Even if you can't be doing a reading make on it you apart. Soon? Even if they put that little um, clamp in there, the CBCS slab presents so much better than the CGC slab. And yes, you don't have the breakup of the white on the number. And I get it. People don't like that. You can't always see it from far away. But at the end of the day, I like the CBCS one because like it doesn't it. look like a sticker. For me, the CGC I one like has always CGC. looked like... Yeah. It a oh sticker, yeah. this is a nine point eight. Let me just take this sticker and slap it right on there. Yeah, I agree with you, Chris, because I, mean, I have I have a CDC slab and a CBCS slab that I bought from other people, and I agree. I've always thought the CBCS was a lot better. Yeah, it's visually appealing to me. Yep. 
And if you're going to have that little well on the back, put put a little thing where you can actually hang it up. Do something like this where you can hang why? it up on that little thing. I always said that. Why, why don't you just build a hinge in it automatically? I mean, I've had old CGCs like this one right here. Like you could, no, you can't because it's flush. So I have the piece there that you could have done it, but you made it flush. You, you made it flush. So even if you try to hang it there, you can't. Yeah, that's it. Why can't you and just do that? Exactly. Put one right in the honestly, middle. Honestly, I'd much rather have a raw book that I can trade out when I feel that like if this raw book just doesn't look good on my wall anymore, which I don't think J. Scott Campbell will ever not look good on the wall. But if yeah, this raw book, you mean you mean Mary Jane when it look would never not well, look good. No when wall. J. Scott Campbell draws Mary Jane, you know. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> but if this book, if this book's not doing it for me anymore, then I'll trade out the book. I don't want to have to trade out an that's entire cool. slab. Like, Unless that's a lot of money too. Isn't it like eighty dollars to submit it? So plus right now, shipping. Right that's now, the last time I checked. Twenty. $20 to 20 20 to $30 depending on the tier you're at. Yeah. Just yeah. through my local comic shop right now, he charges 42, so that covers shipping, that covers handling, that covers um the boxing, submission. that covers the submission fee, and it covers um the insurance. Oh. So yeah. I I much want- rather have someone who's submitting 25 books Compared to me submitting one and getting back one every so often. Yeah. I honestly yeah. Have- And I'm going to be oh, honest. Years. And I'm going to be honest. I don't trust the freaking mail. When I get ready to do my Stanley's, I'm going to do a show on that. I am literally going to drive from New York to Florida. And trust me, I've done it many times. <laughs> so it's not going to be a problem. I'm dropping they, it off. They, the accept, there. they accept uh, yes. uh, in person yes. deliveries? Yep. Oh, Sam. It's called walk ins. Yes. You can actually sit there that. and wait for it. If, Oh shit! Yeah. Really? Yeah. So you'll get it the same day, or? I mean, no, you're not gonna get it the same day. But so you just sit there for like a couple weeks. Submit it there. <laughs> They're gonna do two things. They're gonna tell you when they believe it could be done. They can mail it to you, or you could come pick it back up. So it depends. I mean, like I'm not sure exactly the whole process because I have never done this before, but I'm going to because yeah. I have make a chip out of it. Books that are too valuable. I am. I'm going to make a whole entire video. Go to Disney while you're there. Like, yeah. I'm, Disneyland while no, you're there. No. Vacation. Never, oh, wait. I will go to Disney <laughs> so I can get Disney like this and then run across the street to the Universal. I mean, Dude, I he, like, he spent morning, like, right? let's say he spent $2,000 <laughs> just to get into Disneyland just for that. And then he left. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Trust me. Wait, I have hold on. a lot of connections in the world. Very quick. I know this is off topic. <laughs> um, has anyone seen the new trailer for Star Wars Acolyte? Yeah, I saw the trailer. I don't I know how I feel about it. It is talk about it's it? good. I'm gonna tell well, you exactly I, how I feel about we it. We can talk about it you later, but I just wanted to put it out there. Like, I didn't think it looked that good. Oh, guys, I found. I thought I had it. Per- I'm sorry, you I had it? To you. <laughs> no, 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 I no. Go on. A new? No, I have the new CGC clamp right here. Ooh. Put on the big screen. One. This is. I just got this. Look. Remember I was talking about that plastic piece? I don't know if you guys can see. Do you see that? Uh, Probably take out the light. Turn off the light. Maybe. Because the light's reflecting. Oh, yep. Oh, I see it. I see see it now. Yeah. Right there. You see that big thing right there? You see that? That is what they're doing now. And I knew. I just got this back. Oh, now I see what you mean now. What are you doing right now? I knew that they were going to start doing that. And yep. There it is. So for all you guys out there, this is what the new CGC seal is going to look like. But I, can't I still say, say they should have put a die pack in there. If the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> imagine though, it fucks up the comic and everything. Imagine you dropped your, imagine you dropped your book and a die pack goes off. No. Oh, wait, imagine oh, the post oh, office oh, drops it hard <laughs> enough. And then you see open the package and it's like, oh, die pack. So and that's another bear with thing, me. guys. I think the die pack should go off just in like around the slab. Oh, that way oh that's even like in everything outside <laughs> of the slab. Is, no, it has the die pack. Yeah. <laughs> but the comic's perfectly fine. It just exists outside of that inner well and it completely ruins it. Like it doesn't okay, ruin so the comic, do but it ruins design, the slab. But so I they can take design, it out of the case and still preserve the comic? So the comic is okay. 
But wait, wait, can you ever take it out to get a wee slab? Yes. So once well, it's been tampered well, I'll, I'll, with, that dye pack goes off around the whole rim. So the liquid would like dry off, or would it, it like would see stay in there? No, it would, it just, would stay in there and it, it would, would just stay, um, stain it. It would, it would just it would stain the the, the um, plastic is what you're saying. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. Because it's like because what if you open yeah. it up and the like, ink slides down onto the comic? And it's like oh well, no, no, no. Well, the comic's, the comics inside is own... yeah with plastic. There's a plastic cup. Like if you look at this, you can shake it a little bit. That's because there's a plastic over it. It's a rigid, thick plastic that's in there. So oh, yeah, that's what okay, okay, to I see, I see it. it. There. No, you know what so I would like, do? You should do that. that. Yeah. You should do that for your grading company. That's what I was about to say. I'm going to do one better. What I would do? Okay. I put poison laughing gas like the Joker's in there. So when you mess with it, and we see you laughing, <laughs> and I know you, you mess no, with but what if you? you with. But what if you drop it on your own by accident? <laughs> <laughs> then anybody's gonna have a great laugh. <laughs> oh shit! Oh shit! Okay, damn. On that note, that, yeah, so <laughs> what's that really poisonous gas out there? That's um, cyanide. Like oh, not arsenic. Um, there's something else that what? Sarin. Sarin gas. Yeah, sarin. So it sarin. Like if you like, if you put oh, sarin wow, in like it, almonds. so that way as soon as it cracks open. You have a sarin leak, and <laughs> this so person's to hammered with it. The They're dead. Why you trying to investigate what the hell happened? Sorry, I've, I've oh got God, I feel like I feel I feel, I feel like that, no, I in. the FBI will come to to us and say like, we heard that you guys are planning on doing this. <laughs> nah, I. I, I, I have just, a better idea. So I'm gonna do funny. life labs. I'm gonna put in a voice. <laughs> <laughs> I've always found it funny that people are like, "Oh yeah, as long as you as long as you make it tamper proof, it will be okay." So when I was doing um, some well, put a bomb in it next. <laughs> when I was doing uh, this possible was company say, idea, you ever watch Mission Impossible? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, those we are just movies. Like, tamper proof <laughs> stuff because obviously, if you have a, tra a no, tracker on something. It's CVT will self-destruct in five seconds if you tamper with it. There you go. And it explodes in your face. And, and nobody, and and nobody wants to mess up the comic. If you mess yeah. with it, and I'm going to put caution. I'm gonna be, when you're mailing it, I'm going to put warning. If this bot, if this is dropped, it's going to explode your whole mail truck. So yeah, it's going to self-destruct in five seconds. If you open well, I don't think anyone's going to have that in the truck either, either, the either way. <laughs> I think at that point, they'll be like, no. <laughs> if I think it's a terrorist attack, then we get... <laughs> it goes on hill from there. CGC terrorist oh, gate. Chris, I don't know. Oh, shit. Okay. Does anyone have a uh, spot's layer profile? Off, um, like his mugshots, the pick his background and everything. <laughs> the comics. This guy over oh. here, <laughs> known associates is Chris. Trust me, I got enough, and I got and, and a guy and a gorilla I'm named Alex. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't mean to get off topic, but can we just talk? I just want to talk. For everybody who's watching now that knows about my comics and the audit, I just want to give guys a quick update, okay? And then we get back into this topic because I don't want to run and say it at the last minute. But anyway, scripting's done, book two's done. I'm just waiting Ooh. for the last, I think it's about two art panels that Waylon is diligently busting his butt on right now. And I believe that he's going to probably be done by this weekend, if not next week. And then once that happens, I'm going to have him send me all the art that he done. And I'm going to do something that I should have done. And, I, and tell me if you guys think this is a good idea. Would you guys be interested to see exactly how I make the comic? Every yeah. Step. I want to show everyone how I did it. So what I'm going to do. Dude, that would be a good idea I get to show my kids. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm telling you, I'm going to put this on my YouTube channel. I'll show whoever wants to know. I'm going to show you how to make a comic from scratch. I'm going to show you guys because I got the experience now. I, like I didn't want to do it the first time because I didn't have the experience. But uh, now uh, that I have the experience because now um, you saw some of my art. And um, I, I'm, I'm also saying to you guys, um, probably sometime next week, I'm going to make an official Simbiverse Comics page with the blue check and everything. I have to do this. I must do this because 
this is going to be my official page that I'm going to keep all my art up to date so people understand that the brand's connected. And also, I'm going to make sure during that page, I'm only going to post anything that has to do with the comic period. I'm not going to be talking about anything else. That's why I got the spiders layers for. So I'm going to have that separate. But I'm going to literally show everyone how I make the comic. Every technique I use. I'm not going to show what I write because I don't want to spoil the story. So when I put it up for video, you'll see how I design it. But I'm not giving away the script. I'm not that sounds cool. Everything. But you'll get I enough like visual of I, it I will watch that. to understand. Because I'm telling you, I literally taught myself paneling to the point that if I wish, I wish I would have had this idea for book one. But it's okay, though. It's okay because I'm going to do uh, as I was talking about with you guys earlier as well. This book is six parts. So what I plan to do eventually is every character that you see, this is Einstein, book one. Book two is going to be called book two, the book of Faust. And Faust is the first character that is met in the story. So real quick, that's what he looks like right here. And um, every book is going to be based on a new um, paramour. And it'll be on the cover. And um, so you guys love the cover I showed you, right? I think yeah. it's yeah. amazing. I can't, that ass. I'm going to, when I, when I kick that Instagram off of my official symbiotic comic, I'm going to put that as my first post. And the cover, I'm not going to say what it is, guys, because I want you guys to be surprised, and I really want people to be engaged in the company. So I'm just going to put it, I'm going to put it like this. It's a homage, and it's amazing, baby. That's all I'm going to say. That's it. And I'm telling you right now, in the in the third book, we decided, because Waylon, we, we were talking about doing a homage cover, and we decided on one. But then I'm looking to my left, and I'm like, but that would make a great homage cover too. So I gave him the idea to do two, and he said he's torn. He wants to do both. And during, that's why I'm doing the Cineverse Comics um, Instagram too officially because with that, when that comes, book, I'm already planning for the future. When book three comes, I'm going to have a survey. There's going to be two covers, an A cover and a B cover. And I'm going to tell everybody, Whichever one gets the most votes is the A cover. And the B cover, I'm going to, to print only 100 of them to make it a very, very limited edition one. And if Waylon wants to continue doing this, I have no problem yeah. doing this. But, but I mean, Chris and I'm I not going to do anything for already have a spot, right? And that's it. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Say what? Chris and I, already have reserved, uh, reserved copies. Chris and I. Oh, I got you oh, guys. Yeah. Don't worry about it. You don't ain't got to ever worry. You well, know, boys, I'm taking you first. Like, you don't like, worry about it. Here's an idea for your video. Yes. We can show the process. Cut down a tree. Make a pencil out of that. <laughs> <laughs> go, really go cool, deep man. into it. No. Make the paper. No, no, no. We're not. No, no. This is, this is art that's already drawn. This that's isn't it. the it's history of paper, drawn. Alex. <laughs> I know. I said, just like, imagine, though, that like he step by step <laughs> how he created a comic. <laughs> Step one, how to make a book cut down a tree <laughs> step one he, cut the tree down for the all paper. the paper he oh used God. was made by spider slayer <laughs> <laughs> you brought up star wars like, my own yeah. hands bad batch has oh, been let's out do, for let's talk about that you watch bad batch at all oh snap no i've been mean to i've just been busy don't spoil it please so i'm not gonna spoil no, it but bad it. batch has been absolutely amazing like Dude. everything that you thought might have been a plot hole starts to get addressed. Oh shit, yeah. really? So it, it's it's really well done. I'm enjoying it. Um there's a ton of amazing stuff. I actually Who's had a right plan here? during lunch today when I while well, I had a couple of kids up for lunch attention, and they were actually enjoying the hell out of it. And they had never seen any of the other episodes. Wait, like, you so you gave the students in lunch attention a treat? <laughs> Well, no, I just I turned it on for myself. They were sitting there doing work. <laughs> I, I was like, care. I would love to have you as a teacher. It's, it's, it's my minute, lunch. I can read comics. <laughs> awesome, exactly. It, it's my lunch. You're just <laughs> here because you enjoy. you can't handle doing work, so you're gonna do work right now instead of hang out with your friends. Listen, man, they look, still see it as lunch attention because a got, lot of them don't got, like Star Wars. <laughs> how could they not like Star how, Wars? How right? did, yeah, that's <laughs> so well, the biggest know, thing that I found is like, like <laughs> Bad Batch is exactly what I've wanted Star Wars to be for so long. 
It's the dynamic of the characters. Captain yes. Rex is absolutely amazing in this. It, it is so much fun. And like seeing the differences in the characters between Clone Wars and now and all the stuff they've been through is just so excellent. I'm. S- Did you watch the end of season two? Yeah. Okay, so you know that Tech died. I know. I was like, no. So, Dude, I watched that with my family, and they're like, all oh, like, oh shit. <laughs> I'm still waiting to see if he's actually dead. Like, is this going to be a Bucky scenario where he comes back with a arm and like all this other stuff? Like, they and there's going to be a civil I, war. Again, I'm not going to spoil it, but there's stuff in there that makes me believe that Tech might be alive. Dude, I'm gonna, what I'm if they're just, just what if they're just, what if they're just, just doing that just to <laughs> mess with you? <laughs> And he's actually right. dead the whole time. <laughs> like psych. So, and the the funny thing is, gonna, is like the Empire's using a- clones um in such a weird way, in such a cool way that I'm like, that's exactly what would have happened. Like this this is the thing that we've been missing from episode three to episode four. Well, technically rogue one. Like this dynamic of how did the stormtroopers phase in and how did the clones phase out? Yeah, I know there's been like legends talk about it and everything, but that'd be cool to see actually. So Acolyte, you were talking about the um, trailer. Trailer. I haven't seen the trailer yet, but I do love the premise of Acolyte. The fact that we're getting well before the Republic, like the current Republic era that we yeah. see 100 years prior. I'm excited I've for that too. Wanted an old Republic movie. Yeah, but the I don't know. Maybe just first impressions. I don't, I don't want to influence you, Chris. You could watch the trailer too. Uh, I didn't. Uh, didn't really look that good to me. Okay. Maybe because it's, maybe it's the because it's just the first trailer. Maybe if there's a second one, it might be better. Just first on impressions scale, for me. On a scale of Madam Web to Deadpool three trailer, where would it rank? <laughs> oh shit. Is is it oh, fan I, is it fan friendly now, like Madam Web or is it nostalgia central like Deadpool three where you'll absolutely love it like where I think it's like in the middle. Fall, okay, I mean, it's so in the middle. Freaking... That's it. I'm done, man. I have so many problems with that damn trailer. I'm gonna start. Here's the problem. Problem number one. Close your eyes. What about that alien kid who couldn't close his damn eyes? I mean, I see so many memes, dude. I see so many memes, so many memes about that. His eyes were freaking open. One, that's one I don't like. Um, I'm mixed about it because I wasn't gonna watch it at all. But Jesus Christ, Carrie Ann Moss is in it, and I love that lady so much. It's gonna make me watch it just for her, and I'm not gonna enjoy it because already. Problem number two, it's not about good and evil. When the hell has it never been about good and evil? It's always been about good and evil. It's about power, but who gets to use it? I don't know. Sounds a little um modern feminism to me. <laughs> Who gets to use it? What are you talking about? It's real simple. Right. You're a Jedi. You're a Sith. Who get to use the power is the people who train in either side. So how are yeah. you telling me that a hundred years ago that there was? It's not about sides. It's about power. And who know? It's not about power. Who gets to use it? The Jedi are the ones who use the power. They train to use the power. They don't get to use the power. They use the power. They're Jedi yeah. masters. They're trained for yeah. this. I have a major problem with the trailer because it's putting a new ideology in a way that... And it's been something that I've seen in all of the other Star Wars shows. And you hear them keep saying it. It's not about good and evil. It's always about good and evil. And that's the problem, is that people forgot what the story was supposed to be about. That Sith are evil, but they're making them like, well, maybe they're not the bad guys. It's like criminals that run around today. You just let them out with no bail. They're not really the bad guys. It's not their fault they're poor. So this is the same. Yeah, it's like a feeling that you're sympathetic or empathetic towards the villains and everything. That's what Disney has been doing that's a what lot. They want. And that's and I was like, no, you I can don't do want that. that. Well. But that's my point. That is- huh? You can do that well. Like, Thanos was yeah. an empathetic villain. You could see his side of it. And sometimes I do feel that he was right based on current society. But, <laughs> current society. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely, like, I need to be able to connect with a villain. But at the same time, I don't no. want to see a one-off crappy villain 
Like, what up, Anakin's comment? <laughs> Dude, I like that. Exactly. Like, that's what I'm saying. He, he hit it right on the head. Thank you. Yep. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's like looking at Vader and be like, but wait, we know he got corrupted, Padme, and all that It don't matter. He's still evil. He, it don't he still killed a lot of kids. He's not misunderstood. He still kills younglings. He went in there. I wish they would have just showed that. <laughs> but he what did, what did Dooku yeah, just wait, said? Wait, the original <laughs> plan was that they were going to show it. What did Dooku's it? last words were? Help a team told me to. <laughs> I should have told. Yeah, <laughs> and, and right there. That would end. So yeah, they uh, they, they made a, everything. Wait, somebody on Instagram made a Lego <laughs> short, like a Lego video about that. It's like he's evil, and then Ed's like, "What?" <laughs> if I find um, it, I'll, I'll send it to you guys. He's not evil. What happened was, he, yeah, him, he's not evil. What happened was when he was a child, he went through a lot of um. His parents got a divorce, and ever since then, it totally turned. Yeah, so it's not his fault. Like, come on, come on. listen. <laughs> there is something called. Power and responsibility. And, with and, power and, and, wait, hold on. So who gets to use power? And those the therapy. people who are responsible with it. <laughs> therapy is also an option, too. And you can be your own person. Nah, you don't yes. have to fall into yeah. all the other crap. Um, One of the things that I do like right. about, uh, or one of the things that I found funny about watching Bad Batch uh, Episode 8 with my students in the room today is one of the kids goes, wait, when did Star Wars become about money? I was like, Star Wars has always been about money, bro. Like in, in episode one, it was about the trade. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was all about the trade Republic. The separatists wanted trade um, all throughout Clone Wars. It was the banking clan. There was a whole arc or many arcs actually yeah. about the banking clan being corrupt. Yeah. Um, they, like there's so yeah. many times yeah. where money yeah. comes into play in yeah. Star Wars. Same with good and evil. Like, I yeah, do want an origin of story of like where the called. Jedi, like where the Jedi came from. I want to know how followers started to follow this, almost like an Assassin's Creed style. Like, hey, this is what it was. This is where it came or, from. This like, is why we do this. Like a cold, but cult. you have to have the Templars. You can't just have the assassins. You got to have the Templars. Same yeah. with Jedi. You have to have uh, the Jedi okay. with the set. There's. Dude, gotta, I've been playing you know, Assassin's Creed lately, and it's really good. Yeah, <laughs> it it's amazing. It sucks going back and playing one and Look, two, man, I'll, I'll put, and it does wanna... suck playing um the French Revolution one wasn't as fun, but like everything else has been extremely amazing games, especially yeah. uh, the Ezio series. So. Yeah, I got that on Switch on sale. Look, yeah. if you I'm guys... looking forward to playing it. Nice. Look, I'll put it like this: If you guys want to see anything good about Star Wars that will represent the past. Kotor, Knights of the Old Republic. I'm telling you, those that first one, even Knights of the Old Republic two is all right, but that's a thousand years back. And I love the story. Wait, are you talking about the video game? And I love that whole. Yes, and that's dude, I have that one. I'm I'm playing that one too, and it is good. (laughs) There you go, Knights of the Old Republic. That's a way. If I was them, I would have told that story. That story is written perfectly. The game is great. There's nothing you need to do with it. It literally shows you that the Sith were always assholes trying to gain power. Yeah, and, and the Jedi. Yep. Were just, it's the so ones easy. Who just do the. To keep the peace. Just do the same storyline. Sort of it's need. there. I know it's there. Just use it. You don't and understand. Plus, and plus, plus even Disney. You. you don't understand. Even Disney Alex, is what. Oh. You don't understand. It's real simple. I'm giving a project. I want my freaking stank all over it. You understand? That's exactly what it comes out. <laughs> yeah. It's funny how Disney's Harvey says, Weinstein's talk- assistant making the acolytes. And look, think about oh. it. Harvey Weinstein's former assistant is the one who's making the acolyte. I'm just saying. I'm putting it out there. I'm not saying anything that can't be verified. This is the lady who's making the acolyte. I mean, yep. and if you listen to how she talks about it, honestly, I'm like, How? How is she allowed to make this? I don't know, man. I'm going to be honest. I'll tell you right off the bat, and I'm never wrong about these things, so if we could go back in time and show me where I was wrong, Zero, Acolyte's going <laughs> to bomb big time. It's going to bomb big time. It's yeah. going to bomb because like people like me who are pure Star Wars fanatics, yep. meaning that I remember being a little kid in the damn theater watching the first Star Wars, and the only thing I can remember from that point, because I was so small, was at, like I remember them fighting 
Um, they were doing the Jedi fight. I love that when they were fighting with the lightsabers. And for some reason, the one thing that stood out to me is when Darth Vader got his um X-25 shot down and he starts spinning away. That's what I yeah. got to remember. That was the one thing I got to remember. And I re I remember that in detail. And I was like, you know what? I do like the premise. Like I was a little kid thinking, good and evil. And I'm reading yep. Spider Man at this time. Great power comes great responsibility. So I'm like, this is about power. It's not about power who gets to wield it. It's real simple. Power is wielded by people who have the power that either earned it, took it, or cultivated it. There yep. is no who gets to yeah. use it. Like I don't I don't understand the premise of that line. It's about power. Who gets to use it? No, it's not. It's about good and evil. It's about the Sith who are always trying to kill the Jedi, who are always trying to take yep. over. That's what it's always been about. It's a secret yeah. war within of the whole republic to the point that when you get to the modern Star Wars, what happens? The Galactic Empire forms from all of the shadiness that the trade union was doing, funding all of the military that the Empire winds up getting, building the ships, building the morphing worlds, cloning Boba Fett to get your clone army. I mean, Bingo Fett. story. Now this, now, now this story is pretty much going to be like everything's at peace and there's no such thing as a Sith. But somebody's killing Jedi. No, that's why what I don't like the... because that's BS. Yeah, I've always been there. Whether you don't see it or not, they're there. In Star Wars, like modern Star Wars, they always mm -hmm. bring people. Huh? The the two names of directors, executive producers, all that that always bring people to watch. George Lucas. Well, n modern. Oh shit! Who, who directed the <laughs> Revenge of the Sith? Uh, that I don't remember, but Bad Batch created by Dave Filoni. Oh, oh, you're talking about like including the shows too? Oh, oh. No. yeah, so, Dave Filoni, yeah, yeah, yeah. By Dave Filoni, the Mandalorian. Mandalorian created by John Favreau. Yeah. Those two names, if you attach yeah. those two names to anything Star Wars, it will be successful. Yes, I agree. The fact that those two well, names are not on the echo tells you everything you need to know. Yeah. It's Harvey Weinstein's personal former assistant who's making the acolyte. So there you go. That's all you need to know. And good luck with that show. Because if you I, I will probably watch the first I'm telling you, if it wasn't for Carrie Ann Moss, damn it, I was totally, I was totally like, I'm not watching this. I'll it's probably garbage. still watch it just like, to watch what it. What the hell? No, DC I have to watch it. I don't have no choice. I told you, Carrie Ann Moss. That's it. DC gave the reins to Snyder. Zack Snyder. Hmm. And that was a mistake. All I need is mm -hmm. for Disney and George Lucas and Lucas Films to give the reins to Dave Filoni for him to build the next 20 years of Star Wars and you will not have a single problem with any Star Wars content that comes out. I guarantee it. Get rid of Kathleen Kennedy. Give it to Dave Filoni. Let John Favreau do his thing with whatever Dave Filoni wants him to do it with. Ahsoka was amazing. Bad Batch has been amazing. Clone Wars was Yeah, my son watched Ahsoka. Soka. That's like, what I was forgetting. Shit. <laughs> well, I'm gonna put how much like stuff this, has right? come out I'm over gonna... the years that Dave Filoni's been attached to that have failed? None. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put it to you like this. Um with the whole Kathleen Kennedy thing, yeah, she really needs to go. And that's the problem right there. You're not gonna it's not gonna happen. I mean for years she's been gone. She ain't going away. Yep. I got I I'm trust me, I talked to enough insiders to, to tell you that she's got her claws dug in there, so she ain't going nowhere. Dave Filoni could do better without her. I believe most people could do better without her. And that's the problem. So long as you have Kathleen Kennedy in this position, you are always gonna have horrible outcomes for any Star Wars um product because at the end of the day, it runs by her. The Mandalorian yep. season one. Season two, absolute fire. The best show <laughs> that I ever saw on Disney, it was fire. But at the same time, the third season, what happened? Dave Filoni started losing control. Not Dave Filoni, I'm, I'm the other dude. Um, He started losing control, creative control over the show to the point yep. that the show, this is what happens when you have a winning formula. You see what I'm saying? Like, they're, they're, they're their own worst enemies. You got something working good. Why are you trying to, oh, let's go boss this up to level 25. No yep. one cares about the girl boss taking over. We want all women to be supportive. It's like in yep. real life. 
Your woman, your partner has to be supportive of you. That's the whole point. That's what the women bring. There are support. They don't have to be the heels all the time. And I don't even mind having a, he, a shiro, if you want to call it that. But you're making it all about the females. If you watch the Acolyte trailer, I know there's so many things missing. I mean, I know there was no white men, only the white men I can see are the villains, just like in Ahsoka. And I get it, yeah. you know, but come on, man. There's not even a student that's a, they, you see, I saw a little white girl. You see a little white, everybody else was there. So Did you like I looked at this and I'm like, um, no. And I'm going to tell okay. you, well, I did like Obi-Wan the first couple of episodes. What had happened to me was when he started fighting Vader, I did not like that at all because it was complete BS. It never okay. happened. I get it. You want to make an original show, but it doesn't happen. It's not canonable, and you're trying to make it canon. And yeah. when you're doing things like yeah, that. I didn't like that either. read all the books. I didn't yeah, like because for that reason. the fight for me, like you want him to defeat him, like especially in the last fight they had, he could easily defeat him, but he couldn't because they had to keep it in canon. But they also had... so look, it's real simple. It's real simple. Go back to Star Wars. So we meet at last. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it just he ruins... so get, we meet again. So people like yeah. me that have been watching this since a kid, it annoys the hell out of fans like us because we know you're True. feeding us BS. This is the problem I have with these shows. I'm not saying that don't create something or don't try to do something new, but you understand you're working with canon stories and you're trying. It's yep. like, it's like, what's the show? Oh, it's like the Rings of Power. I don't know if you guys ever watched the Lord of the Rings, the Rings of the Power. No, no uh, I haven't seen the Rings of Power. Hell, they Listen, if you want to really like rip your eyeballs out and hate yourself, I would suggest watching the first season. It won't be a waste of your time. You could talk about it for hours and you'll make so much views on this. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's horrible. It's horrible because you took Galadriel. Now, like I said, I'm a token purist too in a way that I've read the books. I mean, I don't know if it's required reading anymore in school, but when I was a kid, token was required reading. And I was like, Wait, yeah, it, we got to read It was this. not required for me. Yeah. And I wish it was. No, I wish it was. It was required reading for us back when we were children. The to And I'm talking about like, these were not like normal books. They're old and dusty. You got to find them. I wish I had one of them now. They're handbooks. They were like older yeah. books. This was required reading because Tolkien's literacy and the way that he articulated um, the English language was a study that we would go over in class, in our English class, and they would talk about the stylings. And this is my first time being exposed to like actually thinking about the stylistic writings of an author. The first yeah. time I said, wait a minute, maybe I could be a writer. I thought it clicked in my head. And you know, years later, I did it. <laughs> but I'm saying, like, um, Tolkien, his story Head out to Tolkien. is so amazing. But the thing about it is that you got to understand this is a business. Amazon bought some of the rights, but now they bought the Similarian, which is going to give them more material to work with, which is going to give them more material to destroy. I just say this much if you like anything, old that was not made uh, that was made before the year 2000 and anything that's made from i'm going to say no i'll even be more generous than that i didn't start noticing problems until about 2014 is when i started seeing something was a little off and i don't know if this ever happened to you guys but you ever watch something you're like you know i liked it but something was not you didn't really know what it was but just something was off to the point now that you got youtube and people have been talking about this for years. Yeah, and then you I, I've experienced oh, that a couple times. Right. So that's why when I watch the Alkalites, I'm saying from my perspective, I'm not saying that it's not going to be good enough. I think it's going to suck personally because of the fact yeah. that I didn't like the, the what I heard. I didn't like he's telling them, close your eyes. Don't trust your eyes. So what are you trying to tell me then? You're trying to set me up that we should feel bad for the villain. The other kid came and closed his damn eyes. He don't have eyelids, but I was like, what's from that? Uh, that made me cry. I literally saw it. I was like, wait a minute. I'm watching it with, with, with my fiance, and I'm like, hey, D, that kid got his eyes open. She said, is an alien with bug eyes? I saw her laughing. Like, you know, I, I don't like the premise of what they're trying to set up. They're trying to make it like as if there's no good and evil. It's just a matter of perspective. It's not true. What makes Star Wars, I, I guess in the modern world, 
Um, there is no such thing as evil people or good people, just misunderstood people, or even more misunderstood people, which is a complete false because people are just are good. People are evil. This is not something they're not misunderstood. Look at if I was to do a crime, right? And I got caught for it. Okay, I got caught for it. I gotta do my time, right? What do I get to do? Cry about no, what happened was when I was a kid, my father left my house, and um, everybody split up, and I got no, I had no direction, and this is why yeah. Yes. It's basically yeah, like I'm saying I'm poor. I'm a It's basically I'm saying a there was no good and evil, like during World War Two, for example. Right? No, no, yeah. yeah. Like that's like that's like saying, oh yeah, there was no, there was no, um, there was no regime that was 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 genocided people. They were just misunderstood because they kept getting an influx of migrants in their country. <laughs> you know, like, who like. Every time that um that uh, the the Nazis took over, they were getting more and more people, and they were get, getting stuck with the same old problem. They were getting more people they did not want, and that was the problem. Is that when you start looking at things like that, you dehuman. I want the story to be human because at the end of the day, the Jedi and the Sith, the majority of them are humanoids, and they have yeah. emotion. Yeah, I don't want it to be fake. I want it to represent real life. I want it to represent something that I can understand in the struggle. I'm not yep. saying that um, you can't sympathize with some villains. What I'm saying is that not every villain gets sympathy either. And what this show is showing me right exactly. off the bat is let's look at it from another perspective. And the answer is no, hell no. There's good and evil. And if you try yeah. to tell me anything else, you're lying to me. Or you're yeah, trying to present I something that's not true. Marvel. No vision Marvel. of the world. Marvel always wants us to sympathize with the villain as well. Yeah. After after Endgame. I, I realized yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not saying that this... Yeah, with, like, like with Thanos. The Marvels, Why am I going to sympathize with you, Thanos? You did this to impress me. You did. For, yeah. for the Marvels, I understand sympathizing with the villain. Because you do, like, the yeah, Kree but... Empire is a very important empire in the comics. Yeah. And for that to die yeah. off because of something that Captain Marvel did and to have that consequence, which is something that a lot of people have been saying for years, especially DC fans, that Marvel has no consequences. To have a consequence to actions of a character really makes sense and really allows for you to kind of see this is what's going to happen. This is where this is going to go. We want to start having more real life consequences of what could possibly happen. Yeah. Did the story yeah. have to be told? Probably not. But at the same time, it's like, if you're going to tell the story, tell it right. And I feel that they did. They they brought about a um, character that didn't need to have this big backstory, but allowed for Carol Danvers to see the error of her ways, build a relationship with someone that she probably should have seen years and years before, and really just find closure with a lot of things that she couldn't find closure with mm -hmm. and that she had to deal with, but was putting off dealing with because she was finding ways not to deal with it, which we yeah. all do. So do you like, think that yeah. you think if Captain Marvel was a man that would have went down like that? Who knows? <laughs> but she literally I, I killed the AI know. on the planet. Yeah. She like, killed the AI on the planet. It's tossed in the tides yeah. of a war and just leaves the planet. So yeah. Kind of a dickhead. I, I do <laughs> love the fact that um, they went with the Carol Danvers Captain Marvel. I think that was the right choice. I think if they went with a different Captain Marvel, yes, it would have been great, but it also would have been fan service for fan service sake, which, as we saw with DC, doesn't always work either. So to sit there and say that, oh, they should have went with the original Captain Marvel, or they should have went with this version of Captain Marvel, or this version. It's like, if you go with the version that's alive in the 90s and early 2000s, it makes sense in the context mm -hmm. of where you're at, which is, again, one of the struggles that people are seeing. I saw recently that Howard Stark yeah. should be much older in the 90s than he perceived to be, and that between Iron Man 2 and Iron... or whenever we saw him again after Iron Man 2, he, like, de-aged... And should have been a little bit older um, or should, a little bit younger at the original Stark Expo if it happened yeah. the year that it did. But at the same time, you can only do certain things with so many different actors. Like you can't perfectly portray an actor in the 40s in 2012. 
you can't perfectly portray that same actor, what that same actor would look like 20 years later in the sixties in 2014. Like you have to, you have to have a little bit of imagination as an audience. And I feel like a lot of us are yes. yeah. lacking imagination lately at the movies because we want it to be so realistic and good, bad or indifferent. Yeah. I- it, people are struggling to see like, okay, it's been real life for so long that, Sometimes it does break a little bit, and that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Look, I'll put it like this. I don't have a problem that they made her a female whatsoever. I even yeah. didn't have a problem with the first Captain Marvel. In fact, what I'll say about that is this. Um, with that, with the first Captain Marvel, and, okay, I want you guys to visualize this. I'm going to ask you this straight up. Remember the first Spider-Man. Do you guys what? remember the first Spider-Man, how it went down? With Tobey Maguire? Do you remember the first Spider-Man? Yes. Yep. Yeah. The first, yeah, yeah. very first Spider-Man. Do you remember that? Yeah, I remember. Yeah. Do you remember the whole plot? The whole, you know. Now, tell me about Captain Marvel's plot. Do you remember her plot? And I'm not saying this to shit on her. I'm just asking you if you remember. And there's a reason why I bring this point up. Because the answer is you don't remember shit about that movie, but it made a billion bucks. Because well, I was gonna say I remember. That, that, and it didn't make it didn't <laughs> no, but I'm saying like this. Have you ever can you recall that movie the same way you could recall Spider-Man? And no, I could remember I could remember Spider-Man you recall some of it. like scene to scene. Right, because you know why, right? Because and I'm not saying that they should have done this this way, like, hey, what's up, Mark? Expect the comments. Shout so out Mark Spector. Um it's I, I hear what Chris is saying. And I agree with that. We should use imagination stuff, but also you gotta understand, like when you saw the scene, Captain Marvel and Aquaman, these are the two movies that I said that were gonna bomb when they make a second sequel because you gotta understand what was going on there. Those were freak pops of a billion bucks. You're in talking pre-COVID. about Captain Marvel, yeah, you, in pre COVID, and you're talking about Captain Marvel being shoved in between two of the biggest freaking franchises and Marvel's going right off the bat. Yep. That's a money grab. Same thing with Aquaman. You had Snyder's Justice League, and you also had Aquaman coming out at that time. You also had the Dark Knight coming out. All these things that were sandwiched in is what boosted these. You see, that's how you do the business. It doesn't matter the character you use, because like I can tell you, that was a billion dollar movie, and I barely remember it. I gotta watch it again yep. just to catch up. But I watched Spider-Man. Like, not, I, I can't say I obsessively watched that movie. I've watched Die Hard on what I watched the original Spider-Man. But I can tell you, I can remember that movie so well because it was done well. It was fan service, but also introducing a new... or Like, okay, I'll give you an example. I was a little pissed off when he could shoot webs out of himself organically. But then I thought, you know what? This is a modern time. So you know what? That little modification, I don't mind. I always so, thought that was cool, to be honest. Right. I always no, thought it was cool I didn't as a think kid. It was cool. No. Nope. But now I seeing cool like the like I, techie yeah. side of Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland, I'm like, that's what Toby Spider Man was missing that's was what, the tech. That's what Spider Man. Oh, right. Well, that's for me, Sp- I still think it's cool. Exactly. To me, I no, think I, it's so I, cool. I but cool. but in my back of my mind, I also find it weird now because yes. how they explain it's like, wait, so it's just built up in your body. Like where where does it where is it produced? <laughs> is it your stomach? Where does it come from? Is, is it your <laughs> right. stomach? Is it where? Right. It, it can yeah. whiz. So, like the more I think so, about it, the more it's like eh, kind of weird. So I never yeah. thought I would ever see them have the conversation about it. And when they brought it up in the movies, I was so glad that they did. And like I said, I can see something like that going down and be like, all right. But as a hardcore, die-hard Spider-Man fanatic that watched Ben Riley figuring out how to make web shooters on his own. Not Wait, you're a diehard Spider-Man old. fan? No, oh, no. Can't you tell? <laughs> so, for me, for me... The, That's a shrine to how much he hates here, him. Here it is. Here it is. A prototype web shooter. See that? This is a mm-hmm. web shooter. So, for me, the tech is everything. The tech, yeah. because he's a scientist, and he tinkers, and he invents. And I this, never got that with Toby. Spider-Man didn't do that. He was smart, and he pretty much... Never pursued his scientific accolades. Instead, yeah. try to get a normal job. Just still with the Daily Bugle. While you had the Andrew Garfield, who was studying hard in school, yep. who was nerdy and techy. 
And that would have made so much more always, sense for Toby's. Yeah, that's why. With, with how old Toby Spider Man was, it would have made so much more sense Bob, for him to go the Oscorp route or the uh, Doc Connors route. Like, that would have been the way to take that movie to the next, next level. But absolutely. I don't know. Absolutely. And that's what I always said. But hey, yep. I digress because that's the way the movie was made. But also, like I said, you can understand that you can see you want to do different things, and there's nothing wrong with doing that. But you got to remember, too, like, um, that right there, you just took away a big element of what makes Peter Parker who yeah. Because there's times in the comics where he's running out of webbing and he's yep. falling to his death. You understand? And he's got to figure out stuff. It's, you know, and that's what you want. It's, a, it's another level of thrill that is built in into the character himself. I'm running out of web. I gotta go reload my cartridges before I fall. You know? Well, spiders run like out that. of web, too. Skull and spider. Yeah, but yeah, of course, that's what I'm saying. That's why it's good to have web shooters because <laughs> you can reload your weapon. I mean, if you yeah. think about it, right? Just imagine this. It was about, like, let's just imagine spitting for a minute. <laughs> and let's imagine webbing that spitting. How much spit do you have you before you're going to be not spitting anymore? How much so, webbing can he have in him before he starts spitting? You know what I'm saying? Like, I actually, I, I, can't, yeah. I can't fathom this. It just makes no sense to me. I'm I actually to... looked it up years and oh, years ago. <laughs> how much, like, what happens when a spider, a, a, a real life spider runs out of webbing? They mm-hmm. eat their webbing, they actually eat it to recoup it. It's it's a oh, way yeah. that they're able to Oh, yeah, to I've, I've heard about that, too. Yeah. yeah. So could you yeah. just imagine so Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man finding all the webbing around the city? Yeah, and that's just exactly how spiders... <laughs> He's like, oh, and man, I got to go back to... Back you have to remember... Like, I'm not thinking about it like that. <laughs> you got to remember <laughs> everywhere you, you went. You want a level of real, like, let's get real. Spider, perfect example. <laughs> I love the Skull Spider because if you look... <laughs> <laughs> I love the skull spider because that's a little too real, Chris. And the way it's designed, his web shooters are on his hands, and he has yes. cartridges all around his wrist. He has yes. mega freaking web cartridges. That's a great idea. That's why the Ben Riley skull spider to me is one of my favorites, and that is Peter Parker. I, I completely agree. In, it winds up that yeah. Ben Riley was actually Peter Parker. Yeah. So that to me is the quintessential perfect Spider Man. That's why I always say to this day, oh. And this will bring the freaking point home. Spider-Man 2, Andrew Garfield, used his weapon, his regular machinable weapon, just like in the comic. Yep. Catches her in the middle. She snaps her back. She didn't hit the floor, but he pretty much broke her neck. Right? Yeah. So now, are you going to have that kind of thrill? No one you could just shoot. Like, Tom yep. McGuire would have done it. He would have been shooting webs at the bottom because he had all of this unlimited shooting everything down, making the net there, and then probably trying to catch her. But because it followed the comics mechanic, this is so, the only thing I got. I can just shoot webs and try to that's, prevent the fall. That's one of the things about organic webbing that you can't do is change up the way it comes out. It comes out in one strand, and that's that. Exactly. That's what I love about Andrew Garfield's Spider-Man. When he's battling Electro in Times Square and he knows he only has one web and he actually pushes on it so that way it spreads across the whole thing, Mm -hmm. you can see like the thought process of what he's going through and how he's going to do that and how it's going to work. Like every little detail in that movie shows me how much they thought about how Spider-Man looks in real life. But then you do um, Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man. Yeah. And all he's doing to stop the subway is just keep shooting webs. Let's just keep shooting, shoot as many as you can, get it, get as many as you can out there, and just hope and pray. And it's like, and stop an entire train with that webbing and never yeah. ran out of it, but passed out afterwards. Like incredible. Yep. Like that's what I'm talking about. I'm not saying I didn't yeah. like that Spider Man because I did, but I had major problems with that too. And the major problem I had with that was this infinite webbing. He has yep. an. An infinite gaunt- infinity web gauntlet because the thing never run- <laughs> runs out. But meanwhile, you have these other two Spider Men that in the real world, yeah, they're falling. Oh man, my weapon's running out. I gotta reload. Yep. Like Andrew Garfield's falling at one point. You have to reload in the air and then shoots up, you know? So that's yeah. what you want, though, because that's what Spider Man is. The original yep. Spider Man is like that. But like you said, so I've got to recorrect myself. I started noticing a change in this 
Spider-Mans in this universe around the time that the first Spider-Man came out. And that was the first thing I noticed. And I said to myself after that, I wonder what Marvel will change next. And here we hmm. are, 20 some odd, 30 years later. Boy, did yep. they change a lot. <laughs> you know, I, but that's the whole point. That like, note, it's getting late. Oh, and I got yeah. a lot of shit to do tomorrow. Oh, shit. Almost but, two hours. Good. That was yeah. fun. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for coming. Uh, next week Thank we'll you. Talk to Steve Messenger. So can't wait for that conversation. Okay. Have a great night. Have a great night, everyone. Yeah, definitely. Peace. Definitely. Have a good night.